Now it's time to start our first talk. Koji Matsumoto from Nagoya University. He'll give a lecture on the behavior of multiple zeta functions with identical arguments on the real line. Okay, Koji, please. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So uh, today my talk is uh, as in the title. So to discuss some behavior of multiple zeta functions, but on the real line. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, my young colleague, Toshiki Matsusaka at my same university, and also the Ilya Tanetskov uh, from Serbia. Okay. Uh, but uh, first of all, hmm? oh, what? What happens? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my uh, congratulations to uh, Professor Bara Supramanya Baru. And I remember that uh, when I was when I started my career, uh, when I was a first year graduate course student, my supervisor suggested me to read the paper of Baru. So my first paper, the master thesis, was strongly influenced by his paper. So I'm, so in this sense, I'm strongly influenced by Baruz. So I wish his further long, happy, healthy, fruitful, oh yes, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, let's go to the, mm, somewhat strange. So why the page is not going to, mm, 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 what happened? Mm? I think you can use both your mouse or the navigation buttons. Yeah, 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 but I, oh, it's strange. Hmm? The page did not proceed. Oh, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. So there's some trouble? Oh, yeah, are you using a laptop or a desktop? Do you have a mouse? Yeah, uh, no, 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 I have some, uh, there's no mouse. Oh, strange. Koji, uh, if yeah? you use your uh, cursor. Yeah. Uh, let's try that. Cursor mm. is not working. No. You may try going, uh, logging out and then coming back. Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay, so first I I will a bit or oh, first I will stop my uh, share and I will change, uh, try again. Okay. Okay, let's try it. Okay. So then. Okay. Okay. Oh no. <sighs> Why? What happened? So I do once more try. Mm. Hello. Uh, maybe you can try to um, yeah share the desktop. Not the application. Did you share the application or the desktop? Desktop. Yeah, desktop here. The, uh, my my file is already in the desktop, and I now chose uh, I now choose the that one, and try to share that. So then it's shared. Can you see my uh, my slide? Um, and so this is sharing the application directly the application or the desktop. Yeah, uh, uh, desktop. Ah, desktop, okay. Yeah. But, oh, oh, strange. It moved. What happened? I've never encountered such situations. Uh, maybe, maybe you can put it all off and start again. Just disconnect and start again. I do that sometimes. Disconnect it. Okay. 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 I do that sometimes. I Okay, so I'll first uh, go out from the room. Yeah. Mm.
Okay, I'm coming again. Yeah. And so I will try once more. Maybe as Alina said, you can try to share your desktop. Desktop, yes. It's okay. already on the desktop. Okay. Oh. It is visible. But still, don't still don't want to navigate. Uh, uh, Masumoto sensei, eto, ano, nanka, desktop zenda yo, ano, kyo yu suru ka, matawa no, application na kyo yu suru ka, tabu nerabiru to moon is kedo. Hm. Sensei wa imawa, ano, luchira kara kyo yu stiru ni desktop. Desktop zenda yu suru ka? How about? Uh huh. What is the problem? You are not able to share it, uh, Oji? Okay, now, yeah. So I want to try, try again. Uh, okay, please go ahead. So the pages are not moving for him. He can share. But from second page, he is not able to go to third page. Uh, can you click on the third page, maybe by your uh, yeah? Yeah. So, yes. Uh -huh. Then, then, that then do like this. Yeah. Yeah. Now okay. you can go slide by slide. Yeah. Okay. You can see. Yes. yes. The second page. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. So <laughs> now, so now I will go to the third page. Okay. So let's start with the mathematics. Okay. So now, so my talk is about the uh, multiple zeta function, but uh, I start with uh, uh, recording the very no uh, very basic fact about the Riemann zeta function. Of course, in on this page, everyone knows the uh, matter, but I will start from this uh, point. That is a uh, Riemann zeta function. It's of course a uh, convergent absolutely in the half plane. The real part is s is greater than one. And uh, it's continued metamorphically to the whole space. And the only pole is S equal one. And the zeros, uh, as you know, so there is no zero in the uh, convergent half plane. And in the plane, uh, negative half plane, there are trivial zeros, so called trivial zeros at the negative even integer points, minus two, minus four, minus six. And all other zeros, as you know, uh, uh, in the strip in between zero and one. And of course, by the famous women hypothesis conjecture that uh, it is, they are all on the real line, uh, the line, vertical line, the real part is one half, okay? So, however, in the case of the Hobbit's function, so it's defined by the shift of the each term of uh, the Riemann zeta function by the some real parameter alpha. In this case, uh, usually the distribution of zero is totally different from the case of the Riemann zeta function. So of course, when alpha equal one or one half, it is essentially the Riemann zeta function, but except for these two cases, the situation is very different. In particular, complex zeros are very so so very distributed, and the in particular the Riemann hypothesis analog of the Riemann hypothesis does not hold. But today, uh, my talk is not on the complex zeros, but I'm watching, uh, and today I'm reporting on the real zeros. So therefore, first I will uh, mention some history on the study of the real zeros of the Fulop zeta function, which has been studied extensively by recent years. So the first, uh, Takashi Nakamura, at five years ago, proved that the Fulop zeta function has at least one real zero 
in the interval one between zero and one, if and only if alpha, the parameter alpha is less than one half. Okay. And then the next year, the Nakamura obtained the analog of his result in the interval between minus one and zero. And next, uh, Toshiki Matsaka, who is actually the, one of the joint authors of this talk, uh, extended Nakamura's criterion to all intervals, minus n minus one and minus n. So all our uh, negative, negative intervals of length one. And he gave a criterion of the existence of the zeros in this interval in terms of Bernoulli numbers. For example, in particular, he showed that uh, there is precisely one zero in the interval uh, in, in between minus two m minus two m minus two and minus m, minus two m. Okay. And then, in two thousand nineteen, Kenta Endo and Yuta Suzuki uh, find Nakamura's result to show the following. So the uh, in Nakamura's work, he proved the existence of the zero real zero, but he didn't mention the number of zeros. But can Endo and Suzuki proved that actually the full of zeta function has precisely one simple zero in the interval between zero and one, if and only if alpha is less than one half. And moreover, if we denote this simple zero uh, beta alpha, then beta is. So as a mapping, it's strictly decreasing C infinity diffeomorphism, and also it satisfies that asymptotic formula, beta alpha is equal one minus alpha plus, etc. Okay, so now by this work, we now know as a uh, detailed information on the real zeros of Hubbard zeta functions. So therefore now, we are going to the uh, our target multiple zeta functions, which is the uh, Euler Zagier R fold zeta function, which is defined by this multiple series. And this is, for example, this is convergent absolutely in this uh, indicated region. It can be continued metamorphically to the whole space, our dimensional complex space, and also its singularities are uh, already completely determined. It's written there, SR equal one, SR minus one plus SR equal two, one, zero, minus two, minus four, minus six, et cetera, and so on. So the singularities are, uh, at least its locations are now known. So how about the zeros? Of course, the investigation of zeros is more difficult. And the simplest case is, of course, the double zeta situation. Zeta 2, S1, S2 is defined by this double series. And this was, I think, first studied by a paper of myself and Mayumi Shoji, uh, which consists of two parts, part one and part two. And this, uh, the title of this paper is numerical computation, but uh, actually uh, this paper includes both numerical investigations and theoretical uh, discussions. And in part one of this paper considers the case, S1 is equal to S2, that is the one variable situation. So in this case, zeros are just isolated points. But in part two of this paper, uh, we consider the general two variable situation. S1 and S2 are moving independently. So therefore, this is the two variable functions. So the zero sets, uh, some analytic sets, hypersurface, et cetera. And so it's more complicated. And the basic tool of this paper is a very simple, but important fact that is so-called harmonic product. That is, so the product of two Riemann zeta is, you can see by just by definition, 
is written by the, this double sum, M1 and M2. And we divide this sum according to the condition M1 equal M2, M1 is less than M2, and M1 is larger than M2. Then the first term is, first sum is equal to the nothing but the Riemann zeta of S1 plus S2. And the second sum is a double zeta. And third sum is also double zeta with the uh, order of variable change. So this is uh, varied for any S1 and S2, but in particular, if S1 equals S2, which we denote by S, then the last two terms, zeta2, s1, s2, and zeta2, s2, s1, both are equal to zeta2, ss. So therefore, we now obtain the formula that is zeta2, ss is written by the, in terms of the Riemann zeta function. So therefore, by numerical computations and of theoretical discussion, this is quite a uh, nice formula because zeta2, ss is reduced to the uh, properties of the uh, Riemann zeta function. And by using this formula, we can observe. First, zeta 2 SS has two poles at S equal one and S equal one half, because there is a factor zeta, zeta S and zeta 2 S. The pole Z S equal one half is coming from the factor zeta 2 S. And also, it is easy to see that the points and negative even integer points are also zeros of this double zeta. And one more, each interval in between the two even negative even integer points, each interval includes at least one more real zero. This can be proved by a simple, uh, just calculus, because by considering the, Z, uh, the derivative of zeta to SS, which is that one. And from this, formula, we can find that at, at a point s equal minus 2L, the derivative of zeta 2 plus zeta 2 is just minus zeta prime of minus 4L. But this is actually negative, which can be easily observed because of the simplicity of the trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function. And so, so the derivative is negative. So therefore, zeta two SS is decreasing at this even integer point, which gives the conclusion. So these are uh, quite simple observation from the uh, fundamental formula, which is that first line of this page. And of, of course, by using this formula, we can also compute the complex zeros the distribution of complex zeros of zeta to SS, which is mentioned in the uh, aforementioned paper. But uh, my talk, my aim is to consider the real zeros. So I don't want to discuss the complex zeros uh, anymore in this talk. Okay. So today, my aim is uh, not only the double zeta function, we will study the behavior of our uh, R variable, uh, uh, sorry, R fold multiple zeta function, but all variables are the same, S, 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 S. And especially we consider the distribution with real zeros on the real line. So this is a, a result in the paper of Matt, uh, myself and Matt Saka and Tanitskov, and which is already posted in the archive. And of course, uh, this is, uh, I think this is just a first step of the investigation of the zeros of the multiple zeta function. So of course, how about the complex zeros? And of course, more important is how is the situation in general multiple case? Everything is uh, remain. So these are problems in the future, but anyway, today uh, we consider the uh, reduced situations. All variables the same and on the real line. So in this investigation, the basic formula is written there, r times zeta r s, 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 s is equal to the summation of j equal one to r, or minus one to the j minus one, 
zeta r minus j s s s and uh, Riemann zeta of j s. This is uh, in previously I already mentioned the harmonic product formula, and this kind, this formula is also proved in similarly something like the harmonic product formula, or it can be also deduced from the classical identity of Newton. But anyway, this is our basic formula today. So uh, hereafter, I quoted this formula as a fundamental formula. Okay. And so we will consider the uh, behavior on the real line, but first consider the simplest situation that is the case S is greater than one. So this is, in this case, this is a, a domain of convergence, absolutely, com absolutely convergence. So the definition series is varied in this region. So everything is quite simple because from this expression, it is easy to see that our zeta r SSS is monotonically decreasing. And when S tends to plus infinity, this value tends to one or zero tends to one just in the case of the Riemann zeta function. And when the R is not less than two, it tends to zero. This can be easily observed from the, just by the definition series. And probably uh, we can study, uh, we can consider more closely, we can even show that the asymptotic behavior when S tends to plus infinity is actually as asymptotically equal to r factorial to the minus s. And also, uh, moreover, for any fixed s, then the value of zeta r SSS tends to zero when r, r tends to infinity. So these uh, results uh, can be, or all, all can be uh, proved without not so, um, mm, not so difficult from the very definition series. So anyway, this is a rather simple situation. So, okay, now we are going into the more difficult situation. So first consider poles. We already mentioned that the double zeta function zeta to SS has two poles, S equal one and one half. And as a generalization, we can prove the following theorem one. That is, the zeta r SSS has poles only at s equal one over k. k is between one to r. That is, s equal one, one half, one third, one fourth, and blah, 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 and finally one over r. And the order of the, those poles are the uh, integer part of r over k. So therefore we can find the asymptotic formula that zeta r SSS is uh, asymptotically equal to some constant times ks minus one to the minus integer part of r over k. The proof is, this proof is still not so difficult. So when r equal one, this is the limit of the case, so it's clear. So therefore we prove the theorem by induction. And recall the fundamental formula, this one. So maybe uh, the divide, uh, divide uh, both sides by R. And we separate the part J equal R in the last part, uh, because when J equal R, zeta R minus J is zeta zero. Zeta zero SSS is we, we regard as it's just one uh, constant one function. So therefore we obtain this expression and then by the induction assumption, the pole of zeta r minus j SSS is just s equal one, one half, one third, blah, 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 and one over r minus j. And also the Riemann zeta factor zeta j s, of course this has a, uh, poles at s equal one over j. So these are the old candidates of the poles. So therefore it is obvious that the candidates of poles of this zeta r s s are 
just s equal one, one half, one third, and one, one bar. Of course, uh, which uh, the previous theorem includes the uh, assertion of the order. And to prove this uh, order, ass uh, order assertion, it is necessary to discuss a bit more closely. But anyway, uh, the assertion of the order of the poles also uh, can be proved inductively. So this is a, a basic structure of the proof of the cell one. And in cell one, there is a constant CRK, CRK. This is, uh, in this term, we just say this is exists just a non-zero real constant, but actually this constant is explicitly determined. It's given by this theorem. So CRK is, so you can see, so CRR, CR1, CRK, et cetera, and the second, uh, fourth formula, fifth formula, a bit um, complicated, but quite clearly it is given expressly. So this result is also proved by induction, but it's not so simple. For example, to prove this uh, theorem, first we prove the, uh, the third, uh, first half formulas by induction. And then by using these formulas, we prove the uh, second half by some kind of double induction. So the argument is a bit uh, complicated, but quite so, um, how to say, some kind of exercise of calculus, etc. Maybe you can find that the second half formula implies that CRK has some kind of periodicity, uh, not, a, uh, not a completely periodic, but some kind of periodicity modulo K exists. So it may be uh, some interest. But anyway, we can, uh, by this way, we can find that there's an explicit uh, information on the behavior of the uh, of a multiple zeta function near the uh, singularity point. Okay. Okay, now uh, I will go back uh, to the situation in between zero and one uh, later again. But before that, I will talk about the case when S is uh, less than zero. So in this case, as in the case of the Riemann zeta function, we have the uh, so-called trivial zeros. That is the zeta r of minus two n, minus two n, minus two n. This is always equal to zero. This is, we can regard this is a trivial zeros of the multiple zeta functions. So this is uh, again immediate from the, our fundamental formula, this one, because uh, zeta, the fact that zeta js is uh, when s equal minus two n, this is of course zero because of the uh, trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function. So therefore, just one thing we have to uh, note is, uh, that zeta r minus j factor is not singular at that point. But this is already proved by, by our previous theorem, that r minus j ss has poles only in some uh, positive point. So the s equal minus 2m is not singular. So therefore, the zero at zeta js is not canceled. So, so it, it shows that uh, this that RSS is indeed zero at s equal minus two n. This theorem is actually not a new result. This is uh, this result has already conjectured by the paper of Akiyama, Egami, and Tanigawa twenty years ago, which is a paper first established the meromorphic continuation of multiple zeta functions, and five years later uh, this theorem was first proved by Kamano. So anyway, but uh, now we can say that uh, this is immediate consequence, consequence of, of, of our fundamental formula. 
Okay, so this is a, a situation on the even a negative even integer points. So how is the uh, behavior of odd negative integer points? This case is also uh, obtained by this theorem. So when j is odd integer, and we consider zeta r of minus j minus j minus j. And in this case, it's not zero. And uh, we obtain some asymptotic formula when k tends to infinity. That is, for example, if r is odd, then zeta r of minus j minus j is asymptotically equal to r over uh, one over r times Riemann zeta minus r of j, or r equal to uh, this one, zeta two minus j minus j is asymptotically equal to one half times zeta minus j to the square. And uh, when r is uh, even not less than four, then again, we obtain asymptotic formula. So therefore, by this last, for example, you can see from this last term, it is clear that the absolute value of such uh, values at all the in, negative integer points are rapidly increasing as j tends to infinity. In particular, when, uh, in particular, uh, when r is odd, so there is a, some oscillating, oscillating factor. So therefore, so the values of zeta r minus k minus k when k is moving is uh, there's a rapidly oscillating situation. Okay. A proof is again uh, by induction. And it's, uh, so for example, using the fundamental formula, our fundamental formula, the properties of Bernoulli numbers, or uh, sometimes use some elementary inequality. This, this uh, r minus j to the r minus j, j to the j is less than r minus one to the r minus one is very element, just elementary and uh, it is valid when uh, this region. But for example, by using this inequality, we can discuss by mm, just elementary, but uh, mm, not so trivial argument. Okay. Okay, so next. So uh, by theorem three, we know that uh, the, there is trivial zeros of zeta r s s s. So that is s equal minus two n r zeros. But numerical computations show that there are actually more zeros on the negative year line. And indeed, by the, uh, from the data of numerical computations, we raise the conjecture that uh, each interval minus two n minus two n minus one includes r minus one real zeros, which are different from the so trivial zeros at integer points. This is our conjecture. At first, this is this was a conjecture, but then. Uh, we notice that we can prove this conjecture with only one exception, actually. So for any n, not less than two, in any interval, minus two L, minus two N minus one, there are exactly R minus one DL zeros. The difference of conjecture and theorem is, uh, theorem cannot include, uh, cannot include a, a case when N equal one. N equal one is just interval uh, minus uh, between in between minus two zero. In this only in this case is uh, not captured by the following so, uh, proof of the theorem. But anyway, almost all cases of the conjecture have now uh, become a theorem. Okay. Okay. So I will state the proof with the theorem. So first consider the rectangle RK defined by this uh, inequalities. The real part of S is in between uh, minus two minus two K plus one over R and minus two minus two K minus one over R. 
And imaginary part of S is the absolute value is less than one over R. So this is a rectangle. And to prove our theorem, we want to, we, uh, our fundamental tool is a Lucius theorem in function theory. So we are now proving some inequalities which is necessary to apply Lucius theorem. So first claim this inequality. Zeta Rs over zeta R minus S, Js, zeta Js, the absolute value of that quantity is larger than R. This is valid for any S which is on the boundary of our rectangle RK. Okay. So to prove this claim, we use the functional equation of zeta S and find the following. Our quantity is written by a bit complicated, but anyway, sine factor and gamma factors and uh, Riemann zeta factor. And we evaluate this uh, right-hand side, each part of the right-hand side by, uh, by some rather elementary argument. Uh, sine factor and gamma factor is by using some uh, find some basic uh, calculus. We can evaluate the sine factor, gamma factor, and the Riemann zeta factor exists, but this is by the functional equation that this Riemann zeta factor is going into the uh, domain of absolute convergence. So it is a bit more easily treated, but uh, this argument is elementary, but uh, by no means easy uh, using some uh, directed tools such as the uh, addition formula for the sine hyperbolic function or some infinite product expression with gamma function, etc. So elementary, but uh, mm, have to say not, not so trivial. Anyway, by using those tools, it is possible to prove this, this claim. And then by using this claim, we can prove the following claim too, that is, on that boundary, the absolute value of ZRSS is less than the absolute value of the Riemann zeta of RS. So this is again proved by induction. So when R equal two, so zeta two SS is less than one half times zeta two square plus zeta 2s, this is by using the, again, by using the fundamental formula. Then the part zeta square is less than by one half times zeta 2s. This is by our claim one. Maybe you can remember the claim one. Claim one is here, this one. So when r equal to two, this is, and j equal one, this is, uh, zeta 2s over zeta s, zeta s square is uh, larger than two, which exactly implies this part. So then uh, we find this is less than the absolute value of zeta 2s, so we are done. Similarly, when r equals uh, not less than three, zeta r s s is first estimated by our fundamental formula. And then um, in the summation j equal one to r, we separate the part j equal r, and in the part j equal from one to r minus one, we apply the induction assumption to replace that zeta r minus j s s is uh, estimated by zeta of r minus j s. And then again, we use the claim one and to obtain our in desired inequalities. So this is the proof of the claim two. So therefore, now we again use the fundamental formula. We obtain the following inequalities. So the first line is, this is a in this fundamental formula, and we again separate the fundamental formula uh, 
uh, separate the part j equal r in the right hand side of the fundamental formula to the left hand side and to take the absolute value of this uh, both sides to obtain this one. And then in the second line, we use uh, our uh, claim two. And the third line, we again use a uh, claim one to obtain this inequality. So totally speaking, so the left-hand side, R times zeta RSS minus uh, some sig signature times zeta RS is less than the absolute value of Riemann zeta of RS. So this is a situation when the Lucius theorem can be applied. So therefore, by the Lucius theorem, the number of zeros of ZRSS in the interior of the, our rectangle RJ is equal to that of ZRS. But actually, because of the definition of RJ, each RJ includes one non trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function. That is, the uh, number of zeros of the Riemann zeta function in the interior of RJ is just one. So therefore, zeta RSS is also inc or includes just one zero in this rectangle, but uh, zeta RSS is actually symmetric with respect to R. So therefore, if this is not a real zero, we should have the one more zero as a, a complex conjugate point. So it is impossible. So therefore, this unique zero in this rectangle should be real. So this completes the proof. Okay. Well, now we are going into the probably the most difficult part. That is, that uh, s is in between zero and one, and we already know, we already know that. Uh, our zeta r SSS has poles at s equal one, one half, one third, and one over r. So the remaining uh, task is to consider the zeros in this interval in between zero and one. And first, we prove that in the uh, smallest part in the interval between zero and one over r, there is no zero. This is theorem three seven. Actually, uh, zeta r s s is positive in this region for even r and negative in this region for odd r. This is again not. This is not difficult. Uh, this is again uh, the immediate consequence from our fundamental formula. So when r equal one, this is a Riemann zeta case. So it's, uh, it is well known that the Riemann zeta function in the interval zero and one is negative. So it is clear. When r equal two, uh, not less than two, and when s is in between zero and one uh, number r, then we consider, the, again, we consider the fundamental formula there. And we find since s equal S is less than one over R. So JS, RS, those are still in the interval between zero and one. So therefore, zeta JS, zeta RS, those are negative. Okay? And also the factor zeta R minus JSS, this, the signature of this factor is uh, determined by the induction assumption. So therefore, by using those data, we know all signatures of all uh, terms on the right hand side, which immediately gives a conclusion. So this is just not so difficult. But this is only a simple case which we can uh, determine the signature. And uh, when S is uh, larger than one over R, the situation is difficult, more difficult. And we uh, almost nothing is can be proved. But here we can show some numerical 
uh, figure. So when r equal two, the value of the zeta two ss on the real line is as follows. This is a uh, maybe you can see the uh, graph in between zero and one. The one half is a pole of the double zeta function, and from zero to one half, the double zeta is, you can see, the double zeta has no zero, it's positive. So this agrees with our zero seven, just, uh, just we mentioned before. And in between one half and one, it looks like uh, the double zeta function is monotonically increasing, so there's one zero in between, one real zero in between one half and one. Okay. So the triple zeta. Triple zeta, as we know, the poles at one third, one half, and one. And from, one, from zero to one third, there's no zero. So the, uh, the figure says that it is negative. But in between one third and one half, and one half and one, it looks like that the uh, uh, function is monotonically decreasing. And so in each interval, there's one real zero. Okay. So the we are going back to the double case. In the double case, the number of real zero is in each short intervals, the number of real zero is zero and one. And in the uh, triple zeta case, the number of zeros in each short interval is zero, one, one. So how about the quadruple zeta? So in this case, the situation uh, becomes a bit different. So in this case, the poles are one, one fourth, one third, one half. And from zero to one fourth, there's no zero, it is positive. And in between one third and uh, one fourth and one third, and one third and one half, uh, the uh, graphs are monotonically increasing and there is one zero, but, uh, in between uh, one half and one, the figure shows that it's go down and uh, to the minimal point and go up to the uh, to the infinity. So there is two zeros. So the number of zeros of this quadruple zeta in each short interval is zero one one two. Okay. So the fivefold. So in this case, so the in almost all cases, uh, the graphs are monotonically decreasing, but in between one half and one, there is. It seems that there is two zeros. Okay. And finally, I will show the. Six four zeta function. This is more complicated. So, uh, in this case, the poles are one sixth, one fifth, one fourth, one third, uh, one half, and one. And so, in between one half and one, there are three zeros. The graphs uh, go up and then once down to and go back. So the and uh, in between the one third and one half, it seems there are two zeros. And the remaining interval, it seems they have only one zeros. So the number of zeros in short intervals are zero, one, 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 two, three. Okay, so uh, we will go back to the here. Uh, no, no, zero and here. So the data is as follows. So. Let I R K be the number of zeros of Z R S S in the interval uh, S is in between one over K and one over K minus one. So as I as I mentioned when we uh, look for the graph, 
So in double zeta case, the number of zeros is one, which is in the interval in the, uh, in the interval between one half and one. And triple zeta case is one one, and the uh, quadru quadruple zeta one one two, one 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 two, one 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 two three, etc. And actually, uh, I showed only uh, up to the six fold zeta, but we computed to the tenth fold zeta, ten fold zeta. And according to the data, uh, which can be obtained from those uh, graphics, we raise a conjecture that for any uh, double zeta function, all real zeros are simple. And the number of zeros in the interval in between one over k and one over k minus one is given by the integer part of r over k. This is conjecture, and this is still uh, unproved. Maybe uh, I will show one consequence of the, this conjecture. If this conjecture is true, then the total number of real zeros in the interval in between zero and one is asymptotically equal to r log r minus uh, two times uh, one minus gamma r plus o to the r one half, where gamma is always constant. And this is actually uh, the simple consequence of the conjecture, because if the conjecture is true, then the total number is a summation of the integer part of r over k, when k is from two to r. But this is, uh, as you can see from the uh, description, it is a uh, summation of k equal one to r minus r. And the integer part is, uh, can be written by the uh, summation of r less than r, and r is congruent to zero modulo k. And if we change the summation of k and summation of r, you can find this is just equal to the uh, summation of the divider function dl minus r. So therefore, uh, our result is uh, it's nothing but the uh, immediate consequence of the well-known formula for the symmetry function of the divider function, summation of l less than r of dl. So of course, the uh, error term, uh, I, I just wrote error term o to the r, uh, o of r to the one half, but of course this is uh, not the best possible. Um, today I think the best known result is uh, some uh, exponent, which is a bit less than one third due to Martin Huxley. But anyway, uh, we can show the asymptotic uh, formula for the number of total number of real zeros. And this conjecture is, so far I have no idea of to prove this conjecture and it's still open, but very recently, uh, my student Kenta Endo uh, obtained some partial result on this conjecture. Uh, indeed, just three days ago, uh, Endo presented uh, his results in the uh, number theory seminar at Nagoya University. So uh, his work is still in progress, but anyway, uh, some uh, simple case is, has been solved. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, let's unmute and clap. And the speaker. Uh, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, sorry, I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so um, in, in the uh, last theorem you showed, um, as an implication of the conjecture. Um, yeah. Does it mean that uh, we have some sort of equivalence with the sum formula for the divisor function? Or... So oh. it is the conjecture in some, in some sense mm -hmm. equivalence to, to um, this uh, sum formula of the divisor function? Hmm. You mean some uh, the some uh, 
some phenomenon concerning the divisor function is included in the theory of multiple zeta function, is it? Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, I'm, I, was, I was just wondering, I mean, I think I didn't quite understand the, uh, mm. the, uh, the last statement of the proof, but yeah, then I thought probably um, that's I'm, what... Mm, mm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, not sure, so... Uh, mm, I'm not sure, so... Um, ah, so, so then... Um, Okay. Uh, so uh, I think I, I didn't understand what you mean by this, um, by the last sentence of this um, proof. So mm -hmm. you said that this result follows from the well-known formula from, ah. Oh, I, 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 do you, do, oh, oh, we don't know, it is spelling miss. But, but anyway, <laughs> so, uh, do you know that the summation of the L is uh, equal to R log R minus Oh, no. uh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Ah, so, ah, okay. So, so that's what you mean. Ah. Yeah, just, so just, you, I, you, I, I, I price. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Ah, okay. Ah, I, I thought, yeah, yeah, I okay. see. Uh, I thought that you could say any, uh, something from, from the conjecture, I and mean, something more. Ah, uh, um, no, 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 not yet. No, no. no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, I, I get confused. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. More questions? Koji, may I ask a generic question? Has yeah. anyone tried to mix us with uh, multiplicative characters and consider L functions of this type? And of oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it's possible. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah. Probably some uh, analogous statement can be, uh, can be proved. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, direction, I think. Okay. At, at least probably, at least for the real characters. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, you sorry, I have one question. Okay. May I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. in, uh, hello, Professor Matsumoto. Yeah. Uh, in the case of the double zeta function uh, with uh, two different variables, zeta of S1, S2, not S1 equal S2. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. The uh, uh, real locus of the zero is an analytic curve in R2. Uh, yeah. Do you have any, do you have any graph or any shape for these curves? Uh, in that case, uh, here uh, you can see uh, the, this uh, second part, which is published in European Journal. And uh, uh, I don't show any graphics, but uh, in this paper, we have some, at least we have some uh, we, we proved some asymptotic behavior of that uh, zero, zero divisors. But so, you do not have a graphic. Oh, no graphic, no graphic. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, hey, Koti, thank you for a nice talk. Yeah. So I wonder, so your fundamental identity is yeah. based on the fact that you can write zeta SSS as a polynomial in Riemann zeta values. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I wonder we have also other cases where we know that we can write them in terms of um, Riemann zeta values. For example, if you take S1 up to SR and then take the sum over all permutations of these SJ, then this is also a polynomial in single Riemann zeta values. So do you expect that maybe your strategy also works for, for these types? Oh, no, I don't. Mm. I'm not sure, but uh, I think uh, I'm not op optimistic. Oh. I don't. I don't think so. I see. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, no more questions. Okay, let's speak again. Thank you. And